Riding shotgun refers to the practice of sitting next to the driver in a moving vehicle. The term riding shotgun came around after the time of the stagecoach, when somebody used to sit next to the driver holding a shotgun, in case they ran into bandits. My name is Charlie Cook, and I drive a lot. I like to talk to people while I'm driving, so I interview people in my car while I'm driving. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Charlie. All right, this is a little bit different riding shotgun with Charlie. I've got a panel of guys with me. I am late to the party for so many things, and today was one of these days I was late to the party. I am here at Cape Gun Works in Hyannis, Massachusetts, and this past weekend they had their first, uh, what's the right word for it? Regional Gun Makers Match. Regional Gun Makers Match. And uh, people came up here to, uh, to make their own guns and to, um, to have a competition and a shoot, and we have the winner of the shoot, who is also the owner of the gun store. I think the fix might have been in, but I, I wasn't here for any of this. So again, I'm late to the game. Uh, here's who I have with me today. I have with me Toby Leary from Cape Gun Works. He's good where you say hi. This is where I say hi. Yes. There you go. <laughs> How are you today? Toby from Cape Gun Works. All right, we have uh, Bobby from Are We Cool Yet? Yep, Are We Cool Yet? We're the uh, underground collective of uh, an artist. We're trying to bring 3D printing of firearms into the mainstream. Cool. We have Matt from 2A3D. Thanks for having me. You know, Matt Holmes, 2A3D print. And we have Rob Pincus, who needs no further introduction, right? I'm here, I'm Rob, uh, and I get the pleasure of working with these guys to put on this match this week. And I'm glad you're here, even if you're a little late. Uh, a little, I'm only a day and a half late, right? No, it's been so close. <laughs> So close, man. Right? So there's horseshoes and hand grenades? I mean, you know, he, he, he lives here. We get he lives right? He's from Florida. He's from Rhode Island. I flew in from Colorado. You know, but you had a long trip. Right, and it's only an hour and 45 minutes <laughs> if I drive fast. <laughs> and you do. Well, yeah. I notice you have us all set up on the right side, so we're sitting shotgun with Charlie now. That'll work. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about this. Rob, you've, you've done these matches a couple of times yeah. this past year. Yeah, this country. is our third one. Um, you know, I teamed up with Guns for Everyone National and the Are We Cool Yet guys to put on this uh, match for private gun makers, people that either build guns from kits. Um, some people are, are welding guns. We had a guy here who had literally machined his own, like, by hand SIG 320 steel frame. Uh, amazing gun, beautiful gun. People will see some video I'm going to put out on that. And then, of course, um, you know, the 3D printed stuff. A lot of guys are 3D printing original designs. Um, some people are 3D printing, uh, being slightly customizing existing designs and mating it together in traditionally manufactured parts. And we're giving them a fun place to show that stuff off and do a competition. You know, this is about uh, 10, 11 months ago, some of the guys from Aussie said to me that they were, you know, one of the concerns is where are we gonna shoot? Like if ranges say you can't shoot 3D printed guns, if everybody's saying ghost guns are bad and scary and nefarious, you know, it sort of hurts our hobby. It hurts our ability to exercise our freedom and enjoy our freedom. And uh, Guns for Everyone National, Edgar, they said, you know, we wanna start sanctioning some matches and we'd love to do it for the private gun making community. So, so here we are, this is our second regional match and we're getting ready for our big national match is going to be back down in Florida on March 19th in 2022. Very cool. So uh, did you did you guys provide the, the P80 kits? Did you bring them in? Did you guys bring them in? It's a little of both. Uh, we okay. sell them here all the time, and Matt brought a bunch down with him, so we had some cool colors and different sizes and styles that, that we didn't have. So people elected to go with the, some of the smaller frames and the cool color frames that, that Matt brought in. So that was really cool that he brought a bunch of stuff, not to mention a bunch of the slides and already Cerakoted and kind of bundled up some kits. So it was a good good situation because people had stuff to build and selection to choose from. So that was really nice of Matt to bring all that stuff. Very cool. So Matt, you, you 3D print these, you make them your own? The polymer 80s we guys. don't, we're a reseller. Um, okay. we, we sell a lot of 80% parts. If you want to do a full build, all the parts are available on our website. Um, I do, as a hobbyist, do a little bit of 3D printed guns, mostly on the Glock platform, a big Glock fanboy. Um, you know, it's just so simple. What I like about it is people who are intimidated for whatever reason, whether they don't want to mess it up, whether they're not super educated on it, the Glock is basically a brick with a trigger. Um, so it's, it's fairly simple. The parts are simple. Um, so it's really easy to explain to people how, how, 
excuse me, how they work and how they function and how to check safeties and things like that. It's not necessarily as intimidating as building a 320 or something of, of that caliber. Mm. Mm. Cool, cool. So everything kind of comes to the kit with the P80s? Like the slide, the barrel, all that? No, they, okay. there is a kit that well, they used to have. Got in trouble last yeah, right. got a little note from the yeah, guys, 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 guys. Yeah. So, yeah, love note. Hey, by the way, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so now they have a kit that's called the AFT, which is already a, the it's already a <laughs> machined and completed 100% receiver that you do a background check when you buy, and then you get the pleasure of putting all the parts in it and you okay. kind of learning it. The ones we did this weekend were all 80 percenters, so they weren't machined into a factory gun yet. And we completed them. And by the way, this is the match-winning gun right here. The match-winning yes. gun with the match so winner. That is it right there. And I got accused of cheating because I used the Glock 34, and they said the muzzle of the gun was touching the target. So, <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, it is important to note though that was your first build, it right? Was. Even as like gun guy extraordinaire, like you know, you, you are you've got manufacturing. Like, you can all do all kinds of stuff here through Cape Gunworks. So that's the first time you did the Palm Radio. A lot of people made their first guns yesterday, and I think we had three competitors use the guns they built yesterday. Some yeah. other people showed up with guns that they had built you know, a long time ago, but I think that's really cool about these matches is, and Firearms Policy Coalition has been really important in instrumental uh, when it, and instrumental when it comes to these educational days. So they actually support and work with Aussie Guns for Everyone National, 2AO, me, to put on these educational days where people literally, we had one person in Denver had never shot a gun before, built their own gun, went to the range and tested it. And then we had two people that had never built guns before compete. This time we had three. So I think it's, again, spreading the, the art, spreading the hobby. And even for Toby, I think it's important to note, first time out of the gate, built a gun that worked and won the match. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really cool. And that's kind of the, the big leg up is the guns that run the, the smoothest have a huge advantage. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have won if one of the other guy's guns had run smooth on the first stage. But yep. I'll take the yep. W, man. I'm, <laughs> so with the, uh, the, I have I have a couple of lowers for ARs. I may have a couple of lowers for ARs that uh, need to be finished. Um, I'm not a handy guy. Uh, when I was in high school, I took a I took a shop class. I had to bring in a lawnmower that didn't work, and I had to fix it and bring it back. Well, I brought in a lawnmower that didn't work, and nine weeks later, I brought it out in a box. <laughs> yeah, I basket hated. the basket case lawnmower. <laughs> I like it. So with this is what scares me about uh, about the about doing a, doing a P80 or, or making my own uh, having to mill everything out. Um, did you guys? What kind of tools do you have to have to oh, to okay. complete the the P? Like I imagine having some big thing that I don't have. Right. You know, some drill. No, the beauty the beauty like of what happened yesterday was we literally brought tools that are in pretty much everyone's basement toolbox out here and built guns with them. So drill files, you know, a, a rat tail or a, a half round file probably would have been a lot better, but we didn't even have that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Dremel, uh, Dremel, yep. uh, exacto, you know, yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. and that was pretty much the, that's it. That, you know, it'd be nice to have a punch kit. It'd be nice to have um, a bridge porter drill press, but it's totally not necessary. Not at all. And Matt's got a little jig that we all used yesterday that was pretty awesome in the and that, that really helped us. So we had one of these, this is a drill jig. It takes away a lot of the human error. It also gives the user a peace of mind um, if they're not necessarily confident in drilling their own holes with a hand drill. Everybody has a hand drill at home. Not everybody has a Dremel drill press or anything like that. What this does is it mitigates the human error. It doesn't completely get rid of it, but it will make your life substantially easier. We had one of these do five or six builds yesterday, five. Um, it was one, used on five, yeah. Yeah, um, a single one, um, and every uh, we didn't have any hole issues, did we? We didn't have any issues with holes yesterday. Wow. Um, so it just mitigates the human error. So if somebody's intimidated by building, um, they can snag one of these. And uh, as somebody who might not even know how to use a hand drill, because those people those people do exist. Um, it kind of takes that away. And, I'm right and, here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your Second Amendment right. You don't have yeah. to know how to use a drill to have a gun. Exactly. And by this, the way. This is one of the reasons why we came up with, with this little idea. 
That's 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 very cool. Um, you haven't spoken yet, Bobby. No, you came I haven't. From Florida. I, I came from Florida to, to represent the the 3D printer community. Um, nobody really brought any 3D printer or 3D printed stuff. I brought a couple of little examples and explained. I guess here in Massachusetts, with things being a little more restrictive, I guess. A little. I, 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 I'm being courteous. Um, is, there wasn't a lot of representation as far as competitors who were who were wanting to uh, shoot their 3D printed guns. But I did explain to people who had no idea on how 3D printed guns are, are made, uh, the different types of materials, and uh, just some of the processes behind it. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you're trying to do something nefarious with your 3D printer. It's no different than a guy trying to do the, the steel builds or anything else, the 80 percenters except that we want to push it a little bit further. We want to create designs that never existed. We want to take existing designs and make them into something else. Uh, there's a couple of guys I, in our community that are working on a 1022 based system that looks like a Star Wars blaster. Um, oh, that's cool. You know, it, it, we have a, uh, you know, one of my favorite guns right now, we call the Sumac 9, uses a Suome drum and a VMAC 9 upper and uh, AR-15 trigger group. And it's, wow. it, it's it's a range toy for me. I go out and I just do a couple of mag dumps and then I, I have to wait on my next paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Um, you've 3D printed a bunch of guns. Uh, do, you, do you get to pick your own color with the 3D? Like when you order the plastic? Yeah, it's, it's, you, just, you get the rules off of, you know, I, get, I order them from Amazon. I mean, there's you know, lots of different companies. There's two or three. You know, I learned a lot of this from, from these two guys, or at least from the Aussie group. A lot of guys that work with Bobby and from Bobby and then from Matt. These guys really uh, nurtured me kind of through the, the learning curve. Um, but I got into it really quickly. What I like about it is the customization. So it's one thing to be able to print the guns, and obviously, you know, it's your own privately made guns, you know, the record and all that other stuff. But what I really like about it, whether it's just putting the Triquetra logo on everything, um, whether it's changing the angle, changing the stippling, changing the finger grooves, changing the width of a grip, putting a palm swell on it, you know, just all the customization, grooves, whatever I want to do on it, on a simple Glock frame. I started playing around with CAD very early too, and I'm just coming up on a year in, right? It was actually a Black Friday sale in 2021 when I ordered my first printer. You know, now I've got three, and I got one set up in Florida, I've got two set up out in Colorado, and uh, I've just, I've enjoyed it, you know, and it's all, for me, it's all about the customization. You, you, mm -hmm. Custom stocks, you know, I mean, think about like trap shooting, right? Like getting a custom stock made so it fits you perfectly and the angles, that's that's been commonplace in like higher end, you know, maybe a rifle with an adjustable comb and adjustable length of pull. Yeah. All this stuff is, you know, build your own AR put your own custom parts on it. Well, now I can go right into a computer program and print the thing out that is exactly the way I want it. You know, or maybe on the third try, it'll be exactly the way I want it. <laughs> do, uh, uh, do you have to have, um, uh, what kind of software do you need? Do you, uh, have that free, they, you can get all. You can use all free stuff, you know, or, okay. or very inexpensive stuff. Um, there's a lot of a lot of programs out there. I use um, Autodesk Fusion 360. It, 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 I'm, I'm not anywhere near what that thing is capable of doing, but it's easy enough for me to use. Um, what do you, What do you see most people using in 3D I print world? I think most people are using SolidWorks. There's there's some ways to get a, a tremendous discount on that. So people find that that avenue and they, they use SolidWorks. Or they will use, uh, some people will get free CAD just because they hate themselves and, and struggle through <laughs> it. Um, you know, it's, it's not a beginner software at all. But uh, there's, there's a lot of free resources out there. There's a lot of pay, pay resources. Uh, students can usually get discounts on software just because they're students and they're working on engineering. A lot of people in our community are actually engineers by trade and are just pushing the, the envelope on what you can do with uh, plastic made out of cornstarch. Mm. That's pretty wild. It's, it's, I think it's a. I think it's a really cool concept. I, I totally have the FOMO for missing out. Got to do it. And and you know what's nice is John Green, you know, our friend John Green from Goal Gun Owners Action League, was up here, and and I thought it was great that they participated in this. You know, not only was was he personally participating, I think he had a lot of fun. Um, he actually came in second, I think, in the competition as well. But he yeah, was he was here. You beat John Green. But he was <laughs> advising everybody because there is like the extra hoop you have to jump through, right? And and Massachusetts isn't the worst. I mean, listen, to New Jersey. Um, Washington DC, I think, just maybe changed their restrictions or regulations, so they're on the fence. Um, Nevada has this incredibly draconian law where you can't make a, a gun, you can't even own a kit anymore. I don't know how they're enforcing that. Yeah, but they're they're going through some struggles. But at least in Massachusetts, <coughs> private gun making is still legal. You can do it, but then you have to go through your reporting process. I know it's not technically a registry, but you have to right. go through a reporting process with the state. You don't have to involve a dealer or anything else. Um, and John was explaining that to everybody. It's sort of the opposite of California, where California, you have to go to the state first and get permission to make your own gun. Here, I think you have seven days. So, so some guys were competing today. Theoretically, I guess the way it works, you could 3D print a gun, which costs you like you know $4 in stuff, um, shoot it, 
And then if you destroy it within seven days, I don't know what that means, right? Like, let's ask that question because you have seven days to report it, right? So, you, and you're, you're three dollars in, so maybe you're making a custom gun for a match. You're shooting it, you're enjoying it, you're, you crack it in half, throw it in the trash, wait for the next match, and you would never even have to go through the reporting. You know, that's, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but that's right. the way it seems to me. So I think that when people start exploring what are the options, um, you find out that it, we're a little more free than I think most people think around this ghost gun thing in most of the United States. There's a lot of like dark cloud over it, and one of the things we're trying to do with the gun makers match is say, no, this is fun, it's a freedom hobby, get involved. One of the gentlemen who participated in the competition today as well as built his gun yesterday was start to finish from a pile of parts to reporting his frame in just under three hours. Yeah. Wow. So it was, it was extremely quick for him. That is cool. That is, that is really cool. Yeah, in, in Massachusetts, it, we're, we're sick and twisted here. We don't, uh, we don't have gun registration. We have transfer registration, which feels like a Jedi mind trick. Right, right. <laughs> right, right, right. This isn't the registration you were worried about. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So if somebody does build one and they wanted to transfer it, um, what's the process they have to do in Massachusetts here in so, my territory? Uh, if they want to build a gun and then sell it, apparently they need to serialize it to satisfy the feds. Side of the thing, side of things, and then they can just do it like any other gun transfer on the EFA 10 the portal. EFA 10 form, right. Yeah, just go on the mass gun transaction portal and, and report it. But you're only allowed to do four per year. Four per so, right. so anyone who gets the idea that oh, this is great, gonna I'm going to build them in my garage and then you know sell them on at the gun show, yeah, that's not, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, that is really important. I'd say like federally too, yeah. private gun making is for your own personal use. Now it's just like anything else. If I buy a gun knowing I'm going to sell it to you next week, that's a straw purchase. If I build a gun intending to sell it to you, that's illegal, right? That's violating the rules. If I build a gun, and I don't know personally anybody who's tested this, but again, you know, not the lawyer, but you can transfer a gun after you've built it, just like you can buy a gun and then decide you don't want it anymore and transfer it, mm -hmm. but there are some extra hoops you have to jump through because you have to go through an FFL, right? Now, if you're in a state where you allow private transfers, could you just sell that gun privately to somebody? I think you could. I, again, I always tell people I have marks on my guns because they're my guns, right? Just like I have a mark on you know, a TV or something. If it gets stolen, I want to be able to identify it in the pawn shop. Um, but you don't have to necessarily register it. In other states, you don't have to report it, right? But at the same time, I think it's a good idea to mark your guns anyway. So you would need to do that for a transfer for sure. Yeah, yeah, because you got to, um, uh, you, if you want to start making guns and selling them, you, you gotta, gotta get a license. Gotta get an FFL yeah. For yeah. All that. yeah. So it's like I have a manufacturer's license, obviously for the work we do with the Vidity Arms. I think you have a manufacturer's license here at Cape Gunworks, and that's all. But that's a very different procedure. In fact, I'm very specific. All of my gun making is private, personal gun making. I'm not doing it under my FFL because if I were doing it under my FFL, I would have to mark them appropriately, just like the guns. You know, when we get a frame um, that, that is made for a Vidity Arms gun, it has to have a serial number. It has to get logged into our book. The stuff that I print out, I'm actually doing them in a separate place very specifically so everybody knows this is just for me to have fun with. Gotcha. Um, when are you guys doing this again? We were just talking about that. Uh, I know Matt's all in. He'd love to come back and do it. And I said, well, we got to make this at least an annual event. Right. Bob well, wants to come up when it's warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all three days in June. Right? <laughs> this, this is cold as, colder than my regular winter. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. And it's only in the 40s, And wearing t-shirts here. <laughs> like, it hasn't even got cold yet. But... Um, I, I think it's a good time of year to do it. It's uh, the shoulder season on Cape Cod. It's still got some good weather. I think last week we had a few days in the 60s. almost 70s, 67 yeah. degrees one day. So yeah, it's a good time to come. You, you miss the crowds and restaurants are open and you know, good time to come. So if we can make this an annual event, we're all in. I'd love to do it and I'll help promote it any way I can to out in the rest of the country and maybe participate in, on the national events. Uh, we were just talking about that earlier too. It is my anniversary weekend, so you know maybe hey, I can pull that off. There's nothing know. your wife yeah, loves more than gun building. That's right. I mean, let's go to St. Augustine. Gun making right. magic. <laughs> yeah. Annual event. Let's do that it. might be too much information. Just stop right. in St. Augustine. So you're going then. to Florida. You're going to send her shopping. You you go out and spend the day. Stop. Stop. We're going to build you a Palmer right. 80 for your anniversary. It's very romantic. <laughs> 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 Tiffany Blue. Yeah, we'll do it in Tiffany Blue. I, right. I have got her a Tiffany Blue slide before, and she was very appreciative. Loved it. Then shot it, not so much. She, so we sold it, but Rats. we're still searching yeah, for that. But when you gun. make it for her, that's for yourself, and then she me. borrows it. This right. is, I think, yeah, yeah. 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 This is an expression of love, right? I love Absolutely. you so much. I'm going to make a gun for you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. 
that's it. And that's, that's why we need privately transfer. There's your Second Amendment infringement. The idea that I can't make a gun for somebody I love for as one a of your gift, wives, like, right. or, or wedding of my ex-wives, <laughs> if I decide to give them a gift, or maybe if you dress, or like my daughters, if I wanted to build a gun for my yeah. daughter, like it's kind of ridiculous that I can't build a gun for my daughter, mm. right? Or I can't three D print a gun for my daughter. But you know, the good news is she's been playing with a little uh, toddler CAD app, and uh, she'll be she'll be making her own gun soon. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. All right, listen. Let's. This is this has been great. Thank you guys for for having this. I, again, I'm sorry I missed the whole thing. I know you guys are going to start shooting at 8 a.m. It's New England, man. It's like <laughs> farmer and boat people. They're all like, let's go early. Right. I don't know. Living the Jimmy Buffett lifestyle is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> they were wearing flip flops. Uh, shot? Well, yeah, it's only in the 40s, dude. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> they still got shorts on. Well, they were just clamming. So yeah, we're just clamming. Right, 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 right. yeah. <laughs> All right, very cool. Toby, where can everybody find you and Cape Gunworks? Go to capegunworks.com, and we have a bunch of lists, uh, links there for Rapid Fire, the radio show, and also the Gunmakers Match link is still up. And you can also find us on all the social, usual suspect social media platforms at Cape Gunworks. At Cape Gunworks, awesome. Uh, AWCY question mark arms on uh, any of the social medias. All right, very cool. Thank you, Bobby. Um, you can go to 2A3DPrint.com, and we're also on all the social medias, Facebook and Instagram at 2A3DPrint. All right, very cool. And Rob Pincus? Gunmakersmatch.com. That's where you find out about this stuff and the rest of my stuff is all over the internet. But gunmakersmatch.com will keep you abreast of where the regional matches are, and you can learn more about the national match coming up on March 19th in St. Augustine, Florida. All right, I have one last question. With the 3D printed guns, are we finally going to get a PD-10? Look, I'm going to come across this room. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're not driving right now. It doesn't, if I choke you out, like, like no one dies. I can't get we all have them already. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen, thank you guys for watching this. A little something different for uh, riding shotgun with Charlie. I want to thank all these gents for, uh, for taking the time, putting some time in, and uh, telling us about everything, about the 3D gun printing and the, uh, the gun making. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. <laughs> So I like to call this Riding Around the Shop and Gun with Rob. Uh, riding Around the Shop and Gun with Rob. I'm going to interview Toby Leary, the owner of Cape Gunworks today. Hey, Toby, tell me about the uh, Gunmakers match. Oh, the Gunmakers match was a smashing success, and I got first place. So oh, that's that makes great. Even I'm better. really proud to have you in the shopping cart today. Oh. You know, you are my first guest in the shopping cart, and I was inspired by Charlie Cook and Riding Shotgun with Charlie. This is Riding Around the Shop and Gun with Rob. Thanks for tuning in.